Welcome to the Christmas uh, children's Christmas program. Appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, you're in for a treat. All right, let's pray together and we'll let them do their program. Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for each of these folks who have come out to watch uh, children, grandchildren, and nieces, nephews, and I pray for the children. They'll each do their very best tonight. Help each of them to remember the, the songs they sing, the lines they have. I pray, Lord, that the message here of this program would come across to each of us and that you'll speak to our hearts tonight. Bless our time together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to our play, Christmas Carol. We are so glad you have come this evening. All of us have been working hard and hope you will enjoy our play this evening. Just as Jamie, an orphan girl, comes to realize the real meaning of Christmas, we hope that um, each of you will know Jesus, the Savior of the world, this Christmas. <laughs> Our prayer. 
I know. I believe that too. I just didn't expect it to be in the shape of an orphan for the holidays. But I'm fine, really. I wish I could explain the feeling I got the first time I saw Jamie at the orphanage. No. No. When I volunteered at the orphanage, it was like I knew God was going to use us in her life. And I know this is only for a couple of days, unless we decide as a family to... To what? To maybe pray about it some more. You're impossible! Thank you for the compliment. Now how about coming with me to the children's home? Nick can, Nick can watch the other... No! I'm sorry, just a lot needs to be done before she gets here. I need to get the trundle bed set up and wrap our Christmas pre presents and... Maybe I'll just stay, Sam. Good idea. I mean, we don't all want to overwhelm her with all our sunny personalities at once. Don't worry, Carol. Orphans are just like any other kid. Just a little more touchy. What do you mean by that? Just kidding, Carol. Uh -huh. No, don't worry. Jamie's just an ordinary kid who really needs the Lord. Mom, biscuits eating her snowman's carrot. No. Can't we make a snowman? Battleship, Clue, 
upstairs, Nick, Nick and I made this huge Lego Superman. I hate Legos, too. This is going well. Sam. <laughs> lights up on the tree before tonight. Huh? Oh, don't let me get in the way. I finally got them all untangled. Now if I can just reach around the tree, whoa, I almost knocked it over. <laughs> Good move. Jamie, you think you could help me put up these lights? I don't know what to do. That's easy. It's easy. Just take this end and start wrapping it around the tree. Huh? Oh, whatever. Wrapping all the presents, I hope you want to do. 
That's right, Sam. Here's your Bible, Dad. Go ahead. It's time. Time for what? Time to read the Christmas story. Go ahead, Dad. It's time. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with marrying his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. What's a manger? It's what animals eat out of. Animals? Yeah, there was no room in the inn, so Mary and Joseph had to camp out in a stable. A stable? You mean like a barn? That's right. That's what I thought. Not cool. <laughs> and they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. <laughs>
From a father's heart a baby came From a royal throne to grief and shame God's our divine seeking for mine Love reach out to me Up a rugged hill to Calvary, on a rugged cross to set me free. His life for mine, O oh, grace divine, love reach out to me. Leslie. Yeah? What did Sam mean when she said that Christmas was every day? Oh, that's something that started so we'd understand that Jesus didn't come for one day, but for every day. You know, like people only celebrate Christmas on Christmas. Celebrating Christmas on Christmas? What were they thinking? You know, Jesus came to save all of us, born in every time. He lived on earth for 33 years. He died for us and then came back to life. He did all that to save us. We should be thinking about the gift God gave us all year round. The real meaning of Christmas is a whole lot bigger than one day. You really believe that stuff? Yeah, I do. It's the gospel truth. So do you believe in anything in particular? Yeah, I believe in myself. <coughs> Night. Jamie, what are you doing up so early? Couldn't sleep. Oh, I can never sleep on Christmas Eve. Jamie, why did the Christmas story upset you so much last night? Who cares? I care. And I suppose you're going to tell me God cares too. Yes, he does. He cares so much that he gave his son. I can relate to that. My dad gave me away too. Jesus, God cares so much. He ga God gave us his son. God gave us his son to save us. He, and he did it out of love. Oh yeah, he's got buckets of love. He loves so much that he let his son be born in a cold, smelly barn in a trough where animals eat out of. Nothing says love like that. Jamie, let me explain. No, let me explain. Did you know that they found me in a barn? No, I didn't. I was three. I remember it perfectly, like a bad dream. It was cold, and the snow was coming in through the roof. I even remember the old farmer who found me, but I can't remember who left me there. Not that it matters. They obviously didn't want me. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was so cold. How could a father who loved his son let him be born in a cold, smelly barn? What kind of God would do that? What kind of parent would do that? Just leave a kid without a blanket or a note or even a name? I wish I knew. Would you li like to know how I got my name? If you want to tell me. A group of carolers found me on Christmas Eve on a park bench. You're an orphan too? Yeah, I guess my parents didn't want me either. So what happened? One of the carolers worked at the state children's home, so he took me back and named me Christmas Carol. As a matter of fact, he still works there. Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson found you? Yes, he, yes, he did. And when I was 18, 
he got he found me a job, and then I worked my way so I could work my way through college. That's where I met Mr. Bailey. We got married right after we graduated. I told him I had no past or lack of one, but he said he had a big enough family for the both of us, and that he would take me as I was. I tried to keep most of my past hidden from him and the kids until now. Why are you telling me? Because I knew you understand. I thought maybe it'd show you that I understand. You see, we'd really like you to think about becoming part of our family. Jamie, John chose you the first time he saw you. You know, the day he volunteered at the orphanage. But in order for you to become in our family, you've got, you've got to choose us. You really want me to stay? Yes, yes, we do. I'm not special, you know. I'm not really good at doing anything. Well, then we'll take you as you are. So you didn't get adopted? No. I grew up in the orphanage. I did everything I was supposed to. I washed behind my ears. I worked hard at my schoolwork, and I read a lot of books. Reading fiction in, in the children's home made life bearable there, except for Sundays. That's when the parents would come and pick out the child, children they wanted. But no one ever chose me. I choose you, Carol. John, where are you? We choose you too, Mom. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and I chose you. <laughs> I choose you back. Now can we keep her? Okay, okay. We'll talk with Mr. Johnson about the possibilities. Jamie, Jesus also made a decision. He chose to die for the sins of the whole world. But in order to be a child of him, you've got to receive him. Kids, I have a feeling this is going to be a very special Christmas. Come on, give hug, give hug. Come here. Everybody wants pancakes, waffles, eggs Benedict, eggs what? Woof woof. Biscuit wants some biscuits. <laughs> Jamie, would you like anything special? That all sounds great to me. And maybe while while we're eating, you can tell me more about that Christmas everyday stuff. Sure thing, Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <coughs> I'm a 